Hello besties, welcome to my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. So, my name is Esther. If you are seeing me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. You will not regret. And if you are returning, thank you so much for always coming back to the channel. You are appreciated here. I want to give a shout out to Beverly Odeheng. He's one of the subscribers. Thank you, Beverly, for sharing my videos, liking, commenting, interacting with me. I love interacting with you guys in the comment section. Thank you so much. So, in today's video, we are going to discuss about things that you need to do when you first arrive in the UK. So, without wasting any time, let's get into it, guys. All right. The first thing that you need to do when you get to the UK is you need to collect your BRP card, okay? So BRP card is biometric resident permit. So that is the card that, you know, allows you to stay. And this is like your ID, it's like your national ID. So uh, normally when your visa is out, they will send you an email um, or a letter that comes together with your visa. And in that letter, they will tell you where to collect your BRP card. It's normally collected within 10 working days. And if you don't collect it, they will normally send it back to home office. And then uh, I think you will have to request it uh, to be sent again to your, um, either to, to your house or uh, to, the, to the post office. And if you are collecting BRP cards for your children, you sometimes you they will require you to... Um, to request permission to go and collect beer pickers for your kids because they are underage so they need to grant you permission you need to apply for permission to pick up the, your children's uh, biometric cards yeah uh, that is what happened to me when i applied for my kids um i had to request for permission to go and pick them up uh, and you have to take your kids along uh, because they will have to look at the kids um before they give you the brp cards okay uh i hope i made myself clear on that point uh, let's move on to the next item so the other thing is you need to open a bank account uh, because now obviously you've uh, entered the uk so you need to get paid or you need to handle your money and uh, obviously you need a local uh, bank account so you can do this online there are so many banks uh online banks you don't necessarily have to go into the branch to open the account but if you don't trust the online things <laughs> you can always uh, walk into the bank in the in the city uh, make an appointment and uh, then you can um, open your account so normally when you open your bank account they ask you for a letter from work or maybe a letter from school and some of them don't even ask for a letter from school or work. So uh, it, it just depends on which uh, which bank you are opening. For example, when we first arrived in the UK, we, we had to first uh, download uh, the app into our phones. And then we had to register our accounts on the app first. Uh, and then we got a reference number that we submitted in the bank when we went now, like, you know, physically to the bank to now finalize the bank account so we had to take that reference number that we got from the app yeah but uh, like i said there are so many online banks that you can just open in the comfort of your own home and then they will send you your bank details and your card at home in your pin and everything they will send it at home at your at your address so don't worry about going into the bank and what what so no so the next item is you need to sort out your accommodation okay so um most of the time when you when you are a skilled worker or when you are on a sponsored visa when you are on a sponsored work visa you might get a one month uh, accommodation from your employer or three months so in my case i i got three months uh, free accommodation from my employer but in most cases, uh, people get, especially carers, get only one month. Um, so you need to start sorting out your accommodation. You need to start looking out for houses, depending on how big you want. Maybe you, if you want a room, you can go on and get a room. And if you want a, a house, if you have family that is going to join you, you go on and, you know, get a house. 
So um, you can look for accommodation on these two apps that I know. There is Right Move and there is Zoopla. So that is where they uh, post the the houses or the yeah the rental houses. Um, and yeah, that is one thing that you really, really, really need to sort out immediately because you know what? Sometimes the employers will give you one month accommodation or three months, but um, if that month uh, elapses, you will need to get out of that accommodation because others will also have to come into that accommodation. So the sooner you start getting, uh, the sooner you start looking for your house, the better. But once you sort out your accommodation, and you sign your rental agreement and you get your contract and whatever you now have to register for a gp okay uh gp is a general practitioner that is a doctor uh normally it is within your catchment area you don't go and register anywhere that you want uh you register within your catchment area uh it's just to be to belong to a gp center just because Obviously, when you are sick or when there is anything wrong with you, then you just uh, book an appointment in that particular um, GP center and then you get treated by your your GP, your nearest GP to your, to your house. Uh, it just makes everything easy. Um, uh, obviously, there are walking centers in, in the cities where you can just walk in without being uh, registered with a GP. Because obviously sometimes you just get sick within a week or two when you get to the UK. Maybe the winters are too cold or the weather is uh, bad for you and then you catch a flu and all that. Uh, you can go into walking centers uh, because you are not yet registered with a GP. And you cannot really register with a GP when you are just living in that, that one month provided accommodation. You can't really register with a GP in that area because you sooner or later you you move out so yeah when you get sick and uh, you still don't have your own accommodation you can go to you can go and get attended in the working centers okay don't just stay home or you can even go to a and e like uh, the emergency departments so don't just stay home because you are not registered with a gp okay so let's move along the other thing that you need to do when you get to the uk is uh get a uk number you can get that from the post office or you can get that from the those little corner shops um sometimes your employer might provide you with a number so but it's not difficult to get a uk number so you need to get yourself a uk number then you start uh, calling your family members with that number <laughs> you need to get a provisional driver's license so this provisional driver's license is is more like elena's driver's license um, you can go to the post office to get a form and apply for that or you can do it online um it's just to you know if you want to drive in future the the sooner you do it the better um and also the other thing is that if you have a driver's license from back home you can buy a car, you can actually buy a car and you can drive with that driver's license from home a period of one year uh when you first arrive in the uk okay and there are countries actually there are countries that can convert their license into the uk license countries like zimbabwe for instance for instance if you have a zimbabwean uh, driver's license you can convert it to the uk driver's license without going through all the tests and all the you know and it's it's just nice guys it's just nice i wish Namibia could do that i don't know why because we drive on the same side we drive on the left and but we cannot convert our license so you need to start from scratch do your provisional driver's license and then from there go for a driver's test um and then yeah you get your driver's license and uh, it's so easy to get to get a car cars are not so expensive in the uk you know um yeah that's it the next item is you need to register yourself to vote mm -hmm. i voted yes i voted so um i voted in the council elections so you can do that online as well uh on the uh, government website so it, it when you register yourself to vote 
it gives you an advantage uh, especially when you want to buy a house um and you are registered voter it can be can it can be an advantage so yeah just tell yourself to vote you have nothing to lose all right let's move on so you need to register your children schools so in case you have children you need to now um go on the council's website your city council's website and then you need to apply for uh, your kids school placements most of the times they place the schools within the catchment area maybe 10 minutes walk or five minutes walk uh, so it's, it's a good thing they don't really place the kids far unless you want the kids to school in a certain school and you have a means of transport to take your kids to school every morning but um yeah if you want your your kids to to be to be to attend school in the nearest school you can just choose that school and uh, within two weeks they will uh, come back to you and inform you if you if there is space in that school oh and by the way you can also walk into the school and just inquire if there is any space for your children and if there is any space you can then go through the the city council and apply for for the school next item is you need to find a job so this applies to when you are a student because when you're a student you are allowed to work certain hours a week i'm not sure if it's 20 or how many hours a week but you can work um, and uh, obviously you need to work when even if you're a student you may want to take up a job uh, because you need to support yourself you need to support your family at home the family don't understand that you are just a student they just know that you're in the uk and they want something from you so you need to take up a job uh yeah you keep applying from the jobs are everywhere so it's not it's not it's not um, so difficult to find a job so the last point is you need to join a support club mm -hmm. or maybe a gym uh this is just for your own you know to keep yourself busy to meet people you know to avoid depression you know to you know just for social support man um yeah so with that said we have come to the end of today's video i hope this was helpful Please give it a thumbs up uh, share it comment let's talk in the comment box and uh, i'll see you in the next videos bye besties